and I am in the Geelong Jail. Um, I've wanted to come here for a long time, and um, Deb is the curator of uh, a lot of the. Uh, what, what do you call, what do you call your title? Um, I'm manager, general manager at the moment. So, but yeah, but I'm one of the key historians as well. I feel very lucky because I'm doing a personalised tour through the joint, <laughs> and I've got my own, my very own knowledgeable. Um, well, I'm going to say tour guide with me for lack of a better choice. <laughs> now, Deb, um, Deb listens to one of my podcast uploads, and. Um, I was talking a while ago about a crook that I couldn't find called the Plum, and he's he's talked about in um, in media as the king of thieves, and he had he had a gang, and he was superb at not just knocking over safes, but rounding up a, a crew of usual suspects. But he had one right hand man, and I couldn't find him either. So I'm going to let you do the talking. So we do, so Josh Clark, who is the man that we're talking about, who's this guy just here, so this is him in, in later life, this is just before his death, uh, in the Geelong Jail in 1904, but he was first uh, came to the attention of the courts as a 14 year old for stealing a pair of boots, but his name back then was Joshua Edmondson, uh, and he was called a second time, I can't remember what he was called for the second time. This oh, is why I couldn't find him, there's that link, you know yes. when you were searching? Is it... So he was actually transported as a 17 year old to Port Arthur and to Hobart and served his time out there and then once he was uh, released he headed over here to Victoria and still remained in as much trouble as ever so and but, with these guys you, you, you get this kind of thing where they just they, they don't disappoint you by going straight at any point no, do they no well they actually tied with Josh and Josh was a, somebody who was in and out of the Geelong jail quite frequently what and, they, what kind of crimes what, what uh, mostly larceny uh, and, and larceny I think later those? yeah stealing yeah. Uh, so late in later life it was more vagrancy in that but you know early on but they did try to actually help him at one point and uh, I think it was the governor that purchased him a he said he wanted to be a hairdresser or a barber and they purchased a, a set of I did of, not see that coming I, they I, purchased a set of scissors and gave him to him to set him up for one one of his releases uh, and unfortunately he went straight out and stole things again and was right back in here <laughs> so wow he, what um, kind of time yeah. frame did he do all up in this jail uh, he was basically in here on and off from the 1850s up until his death in 1904 and so. what would his life in here have been like well, according to, to some of the stuff that we've seen, he was actually, he must have been quite happy here because he actually, when he passed away, he left all of his belongings to the warders. Uh, so we actually have a, quite a few warders and medical staff too that were here for 40 plus years, which is, is quite a long time. Uh, so they actually got to know them quite well and I think they were quite fond of some of them. But he was a cheeky old bugger and he, the reason we know him so well here at Geelong is he performed one of the greatest escapes from this jail uh, in its history. You have uh, my full attention. Back in October 1889, uh, Josh along with another man by the name of Christy Farrell, who they were a pair of cohorts that were always in trouble with each other. Uh, again, another old uh, Christy. Was with Christy another. part of the Plum Gang? I don't think so, but Christy came over as an exile to Victoria. So, of course, we didn't have convicts came straight to Victoria, but we did have exiles. What's an exile? Which meant that they served part of their sentence in uh, the prison system in uh, in England. So, in Christy's case, it was in Millbank. And then they were bas basically given, like, a conditional pardon when they arrived here, as long as they stayed out of trouble. However, not many of them did. Uh, so, Christy was another one that was in and out of jail all the time. But the escape that they performed was actually very well planned escape and I think they were both in their 60s at the time they did this escape so which made it a little bit more um, different uh, but Josh was a blacksmith and he actually had created a skeleton key by sight uh, from scraps of metal and on this particular line on the 8th of October 1889 he demanded water at midnight uh, from the water cane who was on duty that night uh, water cane wanting to keep the peace went and got um, Got the water as he was passing it back through the trapdoor. Uh, Clark grabbed his hands and Pharrell came out of the opposite cell with a rock threatening to bash his brains in. They hogtied the water to a table in the kitchen before they used that skeleton key to make their escape. Uh, and I think they were both out for about three weeks before they were both recaptured and brought back here. How were they captured? I've got to ask that bit. Uh, well, they actually separated. So they were both caught. I think one was caught up near Ballarat. Uh, Christy was found first. Uh, Josh, I think, was out for about three weeks. But eventually they were found. I can't remember the exact circumstances in which they were found, but it was would have been cheeky circumstances anyway. So, but um, yeah, so that's uh, Clark. But they both, both men actually died in here in Geelong Jail and they were in here on and off for the rest of their careers. Well so. then the um, the challenge, I'm, I'm working here with a, an elite 
researcher. Like this is, uh, Deb's it did got, take me a long time. Deb's got <laughs> god level research skills. So now I'm I'm putting out there um, public public bet: the first person to find the plum wins. <laughs> it kind of sounds poetic, doesn't it? The first one to find the plum. I mean, Gets but the plum. Uh, public. If you guys are researching too, get, get find the plum. Uh, this is the big. So we found one small piece in the puzzle. All right, yeah. we'll look more for the plum. Yeah.